This video gives an introduction to vectors and basic operations on them. A vector can be defined as a list of numbers. If the numbers are written vertically, then the vector is called a column vector. If they're written horizontally, then it's called a row vector. We'll be working with column vectors for the rest of this video. I'll use square brackets to surround the numbers in my vector, but you may see other notation elsewhere, such as angle brackets. When I assign a variable name to a vector, I'll put a little arrow above it to signify a vector, but you may see other notation elsewhere, such as boldface or a little hat. The components of a vector are the numbers or entries in the list, and the dimension of the vector is the number of entries. So here, my vector has dimension four because it has four components. The first component is three, the second is negative one, the third component is seven, and the fourth component is 2.6. For the rest of this video, I'll be working with vectors of dimension two for simplicity. But everything I talk about does generalize to vectors of higher dimensions. We add two vectors by adding their corresponding components. So to add these two vectors, we add three plus one to get four as the first component, and seven plus negative five to get two for the second component. We subtract them by subtracting their components. So here I do three minus one, which is two for the first component, and seven minus negative five, so that's seven plus five, which is 12 for the second component. A scalar is another word for a number. And we can multiply a scalar by a vector by just multiplying each component of the vector by that number. So here, in this example, if we want to multiply five by the vector with components three and seven, we just multiply five times three and five times seven to get 15, 35. The negative of a vector is formed by multiplying the vector by negative one. So here, the negative of this vector with components one and negative five will just be negative one, five. So say we have the vector v with components three and seven. What's negative v plus v? Well, negative v is going to be negative 3, negative 7. When we add that to 3, 7, we just get a vector whose components are all zeros. This is called the zero vector. And it's sometimes written as zero with an arrow over it to signify that it's a vector with components that are zero and distinguish it from just a scalar zero. In fact, for any vector v, negative v plus v will give us the zero vector. We can visualize a vector with two components, v1 and v2, by drawing an arrow that extends v1 units horizontally and v2 units vertically. So for example, if I want to draw this vector v with components 2 and negative 3, I need an arrow that goes over two units horizontally and down three units vertically. The tail end of the arrow is called its initial point, and the arrow end of the arrow is called its terminal point. It's often convenient to put the initial point of the arrow at the origin. So then going over two horizontally and down three vertically would give me this arrow to represent V. But it's perfectly fine to start the arrow anywhere else. So for example, I could put the initial point here, go over two, down three, and get this arrow to represent V. Since it doesn't matter where we put the initial point, only how far over and down we go, we say that a vector has a length and a direction, but not a position. Any two arrows that can be dragged over to lie on top of each other represent the same vector. So which of these three arrows represent the same vector? The first one and the third one do. They both represent the vector with components two, one. But the middle vector has components negative two, negative one. 
So the middle vector is actually the negative of the other vectors. We've already talked about adding vectors together component by component, but let's see what a vector addition looks like when we draw arrows. First I'll draw vector A in blue over 4 and up 1, and I'll draw vector B in red over 2 and up 3. Now to get the vector A plus B, I have to go over horizontally 4 plus 2 units and up vertically 1 plus 3 units. So if I start at the origin where A starts, then my terminal point would be all the way over here at 6, 4. This is exactly the same place I'd get to if I translate over my vector B so that its tail is at A's tip and then draw an arrow from the tail end of A all the way to the tip of B. And in general, to draw the sum of two vectors A plus B, we move the vector B over so its tail is at A's tip and draw a line connecting the tail of A to the tip of B. It makes sense that this is the same thing as adding component-wise because if the vector A has components A1 and A2, and the vector B has components B1 and B2, then the arrow that I've drawn in green is going to extend horizontally by A1 plus B1 and vertically by A2 plus B2. An alternative, an equivalent way of drawing vector addition with arrows is to put the two vectors with their tails together and form a parallelogram and now the vector sum is the diagonal of that parallelogram. Next, let's represent scalar multiplication with arrows. Let me draw my vector B for starters. Then the scalar multiple 2B is what I get by multiplying each of its components by a factor of 2. So that vector is going to go twice as far horizontally and twice as far vertically. In other words, 2B will point in the same direction but be twice as long. The vector negative B will have components negative 2, negative 3. So it will have the same length as B but point in the opposite direction. And in general, to draw a scalar multiple times a vector, say k times v, if k is positive, we draw an arrow k times as long as v in the direction of v. And if k is less than 0, we draw an arrow, the absolute value of k, times as long as v in the opposite direction as v. Finally, let's represent vector subtraction with arrows. Let me draw my vector a and my vector b. Now a minus b is the same thing as a plus negative b. So let me draw negative b on here. That's just b going in the opposite direction. So here's negative b. And now I want to do a plus negative b. Well, that's the same thing as negative b plus a. Now, to do negative b plus a, I just have to put them tail to tip. Well, hey, they're already tail to tip. And then I draw the line from the tail of negative b to the tip of a. This line right here is my a minus b. One way to check this is to look at what, if we, what happens if we add b plus a minus b. Well, geometrically, that means we get this vector right here, which is a, and that makes sense. b plus a minus b should equal a. So in general, to draw the difference of two vectors, a minus b, one way is to just add a plus minus b, but as a shortcut, we could put the two vectors tail to tail and then draw a vector from 
the tip of B to the tip of A. Our last topic for this video is the length of vectors. What's the length of the vector with components 4 and 1? Well, since it goes over horizontally by 4 and up vertically by 1, and this figure forms a right triangle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the arrow, which is the hypotenuse of my right triangle. Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and so c, the length of the hypotenuse, is the square root of a squared plus b squared, or in this case, the square root of 4 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 17. And in general, to find the length of a vector w, with components w1 and w2, this length, written with absolute value signs, or sometimes double absolute value signs, is given by the square root of w1 squared plus w2 squared. In this video, we have represented vectors with columns of numbers and with arrows. We defined vector addition by adding together components and by sticking their arrows tail to tip and we figured out the length of vectors using the Pythagorean theorem. Although we worked exclusively with two-dimensional vectors, vectors with two components that we could draw on the plane, everything we talked about generalizes to vectors of three dimensions or higher dimensions. In particular, if we wanted the length of a vector with, say, three components, we would use the generalized version of the Pythagorean theorem add up all three of its components squared and take the square root of that.